The next question, the member for Guelph. Good morning, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. No one is contacting my office asking the government to use the notwithstanding clause to violate their charter rights. That thousands of people are contacting my office demanding that the government make the necessary investments so children can return safely to in-person learning. Students, parents, and educators are especially upset that the Premier's reopening plan said nothing, nothing, Speaker, about reopening schools. And here we are weeks later, and schools are still not open. So, Speaker, through you, can the Premier explain to the people of this province why the legislature is having an emergency debate about using the notwithstanding clause to undermine their charter rights and the premier has still Question. not delivered a clear and comprehensive plan to reopen schools safely for everyone. Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, this government can do both. We can protect our democracy while investing in quality public education. That is exactly what the government is doing with a $1.6 billion allocation for September. It's why we have renewed every resource we put in place this year, which has helped us lead to having one of the lowest case rates in Canada right here in Ontario. We're proud of that, but we know we can continue to improve, which is why we're expanding the efforts to improve air ventilation within our schools over the summer. $450 million specifically targeting uh, improving over 2,000 projects in Ontario, over 1,000 schools will realize that benefit. We're going to continue to support asymptomatic testing. The only province in this country that has that capacity province-wide to deploy wherever it is needed. We have doubled the public health nurse allocation. We have a plan for learning loss. Mental health funding is four times increased when compared to the former Liberal government. And we appreciate, we appreciate the challenges. Response? the learning loss challenges that have arisen, which is why we have an $85 million plan targeting reading and math to lift those scores and support students in Ontario. The supplementary question. With all due respect to the Minister Speaker, Judge Sus Morgan said that the government's bill, three or, or their election financing bill, is unreasonable and unconstitutional. The bottom line is, is we have two months to go until we need students back in the classroom. And parents want to know, what is the plan? The one thing they have made very clear, along with educators, is that the hybrid model does not work, period. It might save the Premier some money, but it doesn't deliver the quality education our students deserve and our province needs. So, Speaker, at the very least today, can the minister reassure parents, students, and educators that the hybrid model will not be used in next year's educational year? Minister of Education. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. What we can assure parents is that, unlike the members opposite, we will ensure parents have a choice this September for in-class learning and virtual learning, which we believe, given the unknown nature of this pandemic, is prudent in the coming school year. It should be clear. There is no member in this legislature, other than the Progressive Conservatives, who believe in that principle of choice for parents given this, uh, the lack of predictability in the context of the pandemic. And we think parents benefit from that choice. Almost 25 per cent of parents exercise that choice this year, and they may into the future. With that said, our commitment is to ensure the in-class experience is safe, stable, and more normal for children, which is why we have prioritized students, prioritized education workers, all of them to get double-dosed ahead of September to maximize the safety of schools. We didn't have that last year, but we provisioned for that this year, and we made students and staff a priority by giving them expedited, expedited access to the vaccine, $1.6 billion in COVID resources, $85 million in learning loss, and a $500 million increase in the grant for student needs to ensure school boards are well-resourced to protect students and keep them learning in September.